Hey, uh, Deb Evans here. I'm going to give us, I give you a little training today on franchise tax, Texas franchise tax. If you are an LLC, a corporation, a partnership, a nonprofit, any Texas business that's registered with the Secretary of State, um, you will need to be aware of franchise tax. Now, that sounds like another scary tax, um, but most of you are exempted from it. So I'll talk about that in a minute. If you are a sole proprietor, who does not have a legal formation for your business, this does not apply to you. You don't have to do anything. If you are an LLC or any other entity registered with the state of Texas, you are responsible for a franchise tax. And this is a Texas tax, Texas versus federal. This is not the IRS. This is Texas. So Texas is responsible for sales tax and franchise taxes plus employment taxes. Um, so if you are one of those entities I mentioned and you made over a million dollars, it's a little million and change, um, you have to pay a Texas franchise tax. If your revenue, this is not net, this is revenue is under $1 million. I think it's 1 million 110 this year, 1 million 180,000 for next year or for 21. We're looking at 2020 right now. Um, then you do not have to pay any tax. You're exempted from tax. You do have to file the report. Okay, so you do have to file the form. And if you don't file it, you will get hit with the penalty. Okay, so it's super easy to do. I'm gonna walk you through it. Um, when you uh, this form is usually due in may may 15th this year like so many other deadlines the texas franchise tax deadline was extended to june 15th okay so you have a little less than a month um before you have to file this report okay if you don't file it or if you file it late they will hit you with a penalty so pay attention to this okay now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do this online they want everything online these days. So you're gonna go online to do it. So let me share my screen and we'll get you started. Okay, um, where am I looking? I lost it, here it is. Okay. Okay, so we are, Okay, can y'all see this? I'm hoping. Um, this says, welcome to eSystems. Texas's system is called um, web file. So I'm gonna put this link in, in the comments somewhere where you'll be able to find it. But the first thing you have to do is get an account with the state of Texas um, a comptroller, all right? And so we're gonna go here. I obviously already have mine. I'm just gonna show you just the beginning of how we do it. So create profile. Now, if you have a sales tax permit, you already have this, okay? Because there's the same web file. So if you are if you have a sales tax permit, you are set to go here. You'll go into the same account and you'll just click on franchise tax instead of sales tax. Okay, so here's where we go. Create account, enter user information, user ID. Um, you can see I had um, Deb Evans tax for or mine um, that I had before. Um, and then you're gonna give yourself a password. They're gonna check and see if it's been used or not. Um, name, last name, email address, phone number. So it's just basic information, right? You're gonna have a user login. You're going to have a password. Make sure um, you know what these passwords are. Make sure you know what they are. Okay, now when it is time to file, you will go into web file and you will, um, let me show you that one. You will click on over here, see this web file, eSystems login. Now, like I said, this is where you'll go to file your sales tax and your franchise tax, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you the PDF reports just so we can walk through them together, um, but you will not use the PDF, you will use the web file. Okay, so the Texas Franchise Tax Report has two parts, the Franchise Tax Report and the uh, public information report. Now, some states have these separate. You're gonna do one and then you do the other. We have them together in Texas. So let's look at first um, the public information report. No, this is tax, okay. So public information report. Um, now the taxpayer number is the number that you were given when you got your LLC or your corporation or your or your partnership or your nonprofit, nonprofits have to do this as well. Okay, so the public information portion of it, you're gonna update your name, mailing address, city, state, all right? 
you're going to say where the principal office is some places have more than one location right and so you're going to you're going to put down where the principal location is okay now my dog is is visiting okay um so he's pushing me around okay um okay so then we are going to put everybody's name Okay, so this is written as well. This is where you update. So if there's been some changes to who is part of your, your business, this is where you'll report it. Okay, so you will say, um, this person is, is, is now a director, this person is not a director. If it's just you, you just put yourself, right? You just put your name there. Um, if it is, if you have a partner, if you have uh, multiple people that are signed, like a nonprofit has to have three people um, in, in Texas. So this is where you will fill that part out. Now, this part here confuses people. Section B, enter information for each corporation which owns an interest of 10% or more. So most of you, this will not, you will not have to do anything with this, right? Um, because there's no corporation that owns you, okay? Now, if you do have an LLC and under the LLC, you have a couple of other businesses and other LLCs, then this might matter to you if it's a 10% or more ownership. And most people I'm working with, this is not even on the radar for them. Okay, so we're gonna skip B, we're gonna skip C, because this is the same thing here. Okay, sign here, that's it. That's the public information part, okay? Now, the Texas franchise tax, I've clicked on no tax due. I'm assuming that everybody watching this has revenue of less than a million one hundred and ten thousand dollars. If your revenue is more than that, I would hope that you have um, a really good advisor um, on your team that can do this for you, that can help you with this. A, a tax person, an accountant, somebody that can that can walk you through this. Uh, if you owe the tax, if you don't owe the tax, we just have to fill out the form, okay? And they want you to do it online. This is the PDF report, but they want you to do it online, okay? It says right there. Okay, so same thing, taxpayer number. Now on the web on the web file, you're only doing this once, okay? There's no repeating of anything, uh, but this is here as a separate form. Now the NAICS code, this confuses people, okay? You need to know what your NAICS code is. And if you don't know, the easiest way to know is to Google it. <laughs> so um, when I do tax returns for business clients, we have to put that code. I mean, you have to use it for everything. And so sometimes if they don't know, I'll Google it. You know, the, the NAICS code for a t-shirt printer, for an online boutique, for an accountant, for a photographer. And they're all, I mean, they're all online, but you have to know what it is and you have to use it all of the time. Okay, so this is the one code you have. You don't use any other code. This is it. All right, so we are going to have now is 2021 report year, but just like your taxes, this is for the tax year 2020. Okay, and the due date is updated here 615. It's usually 515. It's usually May 15. So make sure you have that on your calendar for next year. Okay, um, is this entity a corporation? limited liability, professional association, limited partnership or financial institution? Yes, if it's not, you don't need to fill out this form at all, okay? Um, black and circle of total revenue is adjusted for tiered partnership election. If you don't know what that means, then it's not you, okay? Now, here are the questions that you need to, to, you, you need to answer. This entity is a passive entity as defined in Texas Tax Code Section 171.0003. Um, you are likely not a passive entity. A passive entity would be in, in, in regular uh, individual taxation, um, owning a rent house might be a passive activity. Being a partnership um, that you don't do anything for, you just, you just, it's an investment, you might be a passive entity. Again, most people watching this video are going to be active entities. You are working a business, you're making money. So you're going to say no here. So you're black and all circles that apply. So we're going to skip this one. This is a no. Now, I think on the web file, it actually says yes, no. So you're going to click the no. Okay. The entity's annualized total revenue is below the no tax due threshold. Yes. Okay, so on the yes, no question, you're going to say yes, because you below $1,180,000. If you are not, this is not the form you fill out. These two questions here, one and two, are confirming that you actually need to fill out this form. Okay, the entity has zero Texas gross receipts. Now, most of you, um, this will be no, you're in business. But let's say you have a partnership or you have an LLC that's inactive. 
okay? Um, you can't just stop having the business, okay? If you're a sole proprietor, you can just quit and say, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm gonna do something different, I'm gonna, you know, whatever. But if you are an LLC, a corporation, a partnership, nonprofit, you're in business until you go through the, the, um, the steps to not be a business. Okay, so even if you didn't do any work, you just totally forgot you have this, right? You forgot you have an LLC because you're doing other stuff now. You still have to fill out this report or you will get a penalty. Okay, um, same with, with the IRS. If you are part of your corporation, you better be filing a tax return, even if it's inactive. Partnerships and LLC, sole proprietors, you don't have any money, you don't have to file, right? For the IRS. Texas, you have to file, and, it's, and there's a series of steps you go through if you're no longer in business. But you will, are indefinitely in business in Texas until you tell otherwise. But if you have an inactive year, you can say zero Texas gross receipts as a yes. Um, most of us, again, this is going to be a no, we're working, right? We have businesses. Okay, the entity is a real estate investment trust. No, again, if you don't know what this is, it's not you. Um, to most of you are going to say no. This entity is a new veteran-owned business as defined in Texas tax code. Now, this might be some of you, okay? Some of you are veteran-owned businesses. Um, so it, are you new? Is this the first year that you're filing? So if you think that this might apply to you, we can click on these instructions and get some more information about that, okay? Accounting your beginning date. This is going to be January. January 1 to December 31st of 2020, okay? Now, um, some businesses have a different fiscal year. Most of us are just use the calendar year. So you're gonna put the calendar year here and again, it's 2020. Total revenue, whole dollars only. So we round everything up in taxes. You round up or down your, your income tax, you round up or down um, this income as well. Okay, now here we are, you know, signing it online, you will, um, you will confirm it digitally. Okay, so that's it. That's all there is to it. But you need to do it. All right. So first step, if you do not already have an account with the comptroller's office, you need to do that first. So that's where we go over here to the cpas.state.texus. Um, and we're going to fill out that form for web file to be create a profile. Now, like I said, if you already have a profile for your sales tax, then you'll just log in. And instead of clicking on sales tax, you'll click on franchise tax. Same as if you have the franchise tax account and now you're collecting sales tax, this is where you'll go to do all your sales tax reporting, which is all done online now as well. Okay, so um, as I said, everything is there. It's super easy. Some of the questions confuse people sometimes. That's why I wanted to point it out. Um, so it's nothing you can't do by yourself. I have people ask me about it. I'm happy to do it for you if you want me to do it for you. I'm happy to do you know anything for my clients, but you don't have to. You don't have to pay somebody to do this for you. Um, you can do it if you have questions or need help. You know, reach out. But it's, it's nothing that you can't do. Um, I have walked people through this on on, before, on Zoom before, where they have get to those tricky questions. That's why I thought I would point them out here in this video. And from now on, I'll direct people to this video. Okay. So any questions about that, please drop them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. And have a great day. <laughs> Maybe my computer is being so slow today. It's just dying because of this weather. All right, here we go. All right, have a great day, y'all.